Welcome into the state of hockey. It's a packed house tonight at the XL Energy Center for the first of three meetings between the Oilers and the Wild. Can the young Oilers produce, including this guy, Darnell Nurse, called up from Bakersfield. Gene will have more on that in a moment. And Connor McDavid, five goals, nine points. He leads Edmonton in scoring thus far this season. And welcome into the Sportsnet studios as well. Welcome in to St. Paul, Minnesota. That's where we find Gene Principe. Gene, what happened? Oh, David, what, I tell you what a day it's been. I was on my way to the rink and I, I just, sorry, I'm a little woozy. I, I kind of tripped over my own feet. Next thing you know, I'm, I've fallen and I've got ice bags and man, I, I could, like, I could really use a nurse. And so could the Edmonton Oilers. And apparently you tell me there is one. Yo, there is one in the building. Oh, thank goodness. And thank goodness for Edmonton as well. They need some help. Here's a kid who played his first two NHL games last season versus LA and Arizona. Crushed that he didn't make the club coming out of training camp, but he's ready to go tonight against Minnesota. And someone who truly needs a nurse and a doctor is the Edmonton Oilers' Justin Schultz. We're still not sure exactly what happened to him, but we do know this. He will be out for the next few days. We'll be reevaluated then we'll know exactly how much trouble he's in and Devin Dubnik the medical theme continues he injured his knee early this season and despite the fact that he's been kind of awkward with the knee he is in the lineup tonight and will start against Edmonton the one thing about Devin that's healthy is his career after signing a six-year deal David I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a bit here I gotta find a seat just toss it back to you, okay, buddy? Take it from here, right? Help me out here. Oh, hang on. He's falling and he can't get up. And uh, these guys, <laughs> is speechless, John Shannon. Jaffe. Uh, it should be fun. And, and the big theme there with Gene, not just the medical situation, but we do have Darnell Nurse in the house. He had a two-game audition last year. Yep. He wasn't able to stick. What can he do this time to, to stick with the big club? Well, he'll play a simple game. That's really the thing. That's really why he was sent to Bakersfield, David, was to learn how to play the pro game. I talked to Jerry Fleming, the coach of the Bakersfield team in the American League for the Oilers, and he said that we needed to tell him how to do this wrong because this is what he did all last season in Sault Ste. Marie. He tried to do way too much. He tried to do so much more that it had an adverse effect on the rest of the team. He, they need the game to come to him. He's going to start with Oscar Kleffbaum, but I fully expect that he's going to end up playing with every other defenseman on the roster today. And not an easy task because this wild team, they have an explosive offense at times. What are you expecting tonight, Billy? Well, I expect them to attack the Edmonton Oilers with speed. That's that's their game. They like to roll their four lines. They have a tree goal the game so far, but what you got to keep an eye on, folks, is how aggressive straight line speed they have as a team. Even Thomas Vanek, who's finally healthy and, and happy, it seems like this year, is even seeming a little bit faster. But if you take a look at some of these highlights, a lot of straight line stuff. And here's the other thing you have to watch out for. Perhaps the most aggressive def uh, defensive crew in the National Hockey League with regard to pinching pucks along the wall. Therefore, the young defenseman for the Edmonton Oilers better make sure when they get the puck they either get it up high or look through the middle of the ice perhaps. Otherwise, they could be in for a long night with the D-men coming in and helping out the Wild forwards. Wild are a perfect 3-0 and at home this season. The Oilers will look to put an end to that streak. Kevin, Drew, and Gene are up next. We will see you after 20 minutes. Enjoy Rogers Oilers Hockey. Rogers Oilers Hockey. Brought to you by Rogers. With Rogers, stay connected wherever your day takes you. By Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Edmonton Oilers. By Ford, official automotive partner of the Edmonton Oilers. By Scotiabank, you're richer than you think. And by the Rexall family of pharmacies. Welcome back to... Uh... St. Paul and uh, welcome to these fans that are uh, entering the XL Energy Center and to those that are watching at home time to play Safeway's million dollar score and win if any Oilers player scores five goals in tonight's game Astrid Woodard of Edmonton could win one million dollars shop at Safeway you could be our next lucky winner right here on Sportsnet and I tell you what who's uh, winning the battle when it comes to being the Oilers top line right now it is Benoit Pouliot, Connor McDavid and Nail Yakupov, McDavid and Yakupov currently riding five game point scoring streaks. Pouliot, three games in a row where he's had a point. Drew and Kevin. Gene, thanks very much. Good evening, everyone. Welcome inside the XL Energy Center, the first of three between the Minnesota Wild and the Edmonton Oilers. Let's meet the starting goaltenders 
For Cam Talbot, this will be his seventh start of the season. He looks to even his road record at 2-2. Two and two. And now, as the guys mentioned, there was some concern that Devin Dubnik's sore knee would keep him out of the lineup. But the former Oiler is good to go. He came on in relief in the game against Winnipeg, gave up a goal on 15 shots. He took the loss in a 5-4 defeat. The Oilers, of course, losing 3-2 against L.A. on Sunday, and lineup changes through. Darnell Nurse is in. Justin Schultz is out. Exciting for the fans to get a chance to see Darnell and see if he has learned a little bit in the brief time he's been in the AHL. He'll be paired with Oscar Kleffbaum, but it is... Mark Fain and Andre Sekera, who will start this game against the Minnesota Wild with the Ryan Nugent Hopkins line up front, Hall and Klinkhammer on the wings. Rob Klinkhammer against Ryan Suter, who is with Edmonton native Jared Spurgeon, Zach Parise, Mikhail Granlin, and Jason Pominville up front for the Minnesota Wild, who are 3-0 and at home. And it's Devin Dubnik who has gotten all three of those victories here in St. Paul. Sekera behind the net. Palmonville's got it now, trying to center it out in front. Hall picks it up. Hall with a nifty little pass to Klinkhammer. Klinkhammer gives it right back to Taylor Hall. Hall cuts to the middle. Let's a wrist shot go, and that went off of Jared Spurgeon and up into the netting. Let's take a look at the keys to the game. They're brought to you by Ford, official automotive partner of the Edmonton Oilers. For Todd McCullen, you've got to play inside the minnesota wild and you've got to beat their puck possession game with numbers you've got to make sure you have more inside numbers than they do and for the minnesota wild mike yo get on your bike that is referring to their cycle they've got a very good cycle team they will work you down low they will stay in the offensive zone if you let them that's why you've got to play the inside game with the numbers eric Ryba. And Brandon Davidson on the blue line as Anton Lander won that draw. Davidson took a shot. Griba did as well. The puck is loose. It comes back to Griba. Couldn't get the shot away. Vanek broke it up, but the Oilers keep the puck in the wild zone. Korpakoski. Lander. Herschel. Charlie Coyle sends it around the boards. Vanek plays it to the middle. Gave it away to Lander. Anton Lander fed it in front. But Brodine was there to break it up. And back come the Minnesota Wild. Thomas Vanek bounces one in on Cam Talbot. Panic with four goals on the season. He took until December the 16th to get those four goals last year. He's been battling injuries. He had off-season surgery to repair a groin problem. There is Darnell Nurse, number 25, paired with Oscar Kleffbaum. And Gene talked about it two games last year and the six games in Bakersfield this year. He's got one point. Julia Yakupov. Hit by Marco Scandella. Pouliot back to Nurse, lets a shot go. That one goes wide. Zucker can't bounce it by Oscar Klefbaum. Connor McDavid keeps it in for Yakupov. Yakupov checked by Scandella. Anton Slepeshev getting his first shift. He was a healthy scratch in that game against Los Angeles. That fourth line includes Slepeshev, Bakarinen. And Mark Letestu. This is Jason Zucker. Zucker scored 10 seconds in, and again, that game against Winnipeg, that is a franchise record for the Minnesota Wild. Zucker behind the net. He is with Carter and Halla. Zucker fires a shot towards the cage, and that one missed. Ryan Suter picks it up on the near side. He will give it to Halla. Ryan Carter lays it around the boards. Pass came all the way back from Chris Porter, missed it, and the Oilers will get a change. Ryan Suter averaging almost 26 minutes a game. They have cut that down because he's getting on in years. <laughs> really? <laughs> Holla drops it for Carter, but a neat little intercept there by Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins to Clinkhammer. A wrist shot again. Spurgeon gets the stick in the way, and it goes up into the net. You're going to spend some time in your zone against the Minnesota Wild. They have a nice little pre-pinch going with their two defensemen playing low. Third guy is up high. They do a great job in the forecheck. But if you're patient, if you play inside and you have better numbers than they do in certain situations, you'll be able to get that puck and start moving out. There's a nice little move by the three forwards there with Nugent Hopkins, Taylor Hall, and Rob Pinkhamper, but you've got to get shots to the net. So far, just one shot each. 
as Nugent Hopkins lines up against Miko Koivu. Koivu wins that draw. Scandella plays it off the boards looking for Zucker. Zucker dropped it. Koivu's got it. Koivu on a backhand that goes wide. Brodeen pinching in. Hall lost it. The puck comes right out in front. And Cam Talbot covers. You talked about it the other day, well, Cam Talbot. Where are the Edmonton Oilers in regards to the number one goalie, number two goalie? Who's going to be the guy? The way Cam Talbot has played, even though Anders Nielsen has been very good. Cam Talbot, you would think, is getting the nod right now as being that number one. He played very well. Last game, I thought he was exceptional, especially in that second period when the Oilers were outshot so bad. He really showed why Peter Shirelli wanted to go out and get him to be the guy in the nest for the next few years for the Oilers. Three goals on 34 shots. He made some spectacular saves. Brodine keeps it in briefly at the point. Purcell moves it to the middle, and it's picked up there by Matt Dumba. Dumba throws it towards the net. That gets deflected, goes off the glass. Nurse lays it around the boards. Dumba will keep it in. Zach Parise. Here is Granlin. Granlin turns, lets a shot go, and that one went wide. Dumba keeps it in on the far side. Dumba down low for Parisi. Parisi checked by Darnell Nurse and then had the puck stripped there by Granlin. Here's Pominville ringing it off the iron. Another shot gets deflected. Brodeen let it go. Jason Pominville gets the best chance so far in this game. Here comes Brodeen. The puck skipped over his stick. He regains possession. Pays it behind the net. Mikhail Granlin being watched by... Oscar Clefbaum, Pominville puts it back to Dumba. Dumba stumbled and trying to take advantage of it is Korpakoski's with Teddy Purcell. Purcell hangs onto it right out in front, and he put it between the legs of Korpakoski. Honestly, that's you've got to get something to the net on a two-on-one like that. Nice play, nice patience by Teddy Purcell, but the first pass from Korpakoski wasn't very good, and that stopped the momentum of the attack. I wonder what happened to Matt Dumba there, just kind of fell yeah, over. Sniper up in the stands to go to skate zone. Back in it in by Yakupov. Connor McDavid almost caught up to that. Yakupov with the steal. The Oilers third in the league in takeaways. McDavid against Scandella. This is Yakupov's shot. It goes off Charlie Coyle. And quickly back the other way comes Vanek. Vanek trying to make a move and couldn't get around. Mark Fain. Good support by Andre Sekera there. McDavid. Kind of gets stood up there by Prosser, but carries on. McDavid. Oh, nice move right out in front for Slepashev. Sticks in the way, couldn't get the shot, but what a play by <laughs> McDavid behind the net to get him the puck. There's two times he should have been knocked off the puck there, and he was still able to do that. Keep control of it and try to make something out of really nothing that was available. Coil. Has to get away from Slepeshev. Nate Prosser can't get it out of his own zone. Prosser in the lineup. He was a healthy scratch against Winnipeg. Christian Folan takes a seat tonight. Scandella can't get the backhand by Rob Klinkhammer. Suter under pressure from Klinkhammer. Klinkhammer had seven hits in that game against LA. Leads the team. He's got 25 on the season. Nugent Hopkins now against Chris Porter. Hall, Nugent Hopkins, Klinkhammer. Rob Klinkhammer off the skate of Nugent Hopkins. It comes right to Oscar Kleffbaum. Slap pass and a tip by Nugent Hopkins that goes wide. Hall, great play to get it back to Nurse. He paid the price. Ryan Carter with it now. Backhand pass to Halla and offside is Chris Porter. Connor McDavid on a five-game point streak. Watch this move. I had St. Paul, Minnesota, everybody. Kevin Quinn working alongside uh, Drew uh, Remenda. You lucky dog. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, let's talk about the start for the Edmonton Oilers so far. It hasn't been, we're not too far into the game, but let's get your impression early. Well, the one thing that you're going to see with the Edmonton Oilers, they're going to spend time in their zone. Right now, I like the presence in their zone because it's going to be a long night. You're going to have to play against a tough, tenacious team. But so far, they're very poised with their structure. 13.07 left to go in the first period. Not many shots to talk about, just one each. 
like the other thing I liked, I didn't like the fact that he got hit, but I liked the fact Taylor Hall was willing to stand in for that play. Zucker with a shot that is stopped by Cam Talbot. Look at McDavid speeding towards the puck and gets it, drops it back. Yakupov turn, he was checked, and Zucker comes back the other way. Zucker inside the line, feeds it to Suter, and scores. Cam Talbot, I don't think, saw that no. shot. And the Wild have a 1 0 lead. You heard Billy Jaffe talk about it, and Todd McCollum talked about the Minnesota Wild today. They're a very good team on the transition. And they're going to go in the transition right here. Even though the puck is deep, bang, they're going to be moving the other way. They've got a nice attack up the ice. They've got numbers up the ice. And you're right. I think this is a double screen, Kevin. When you have a look at this shot, Ryan Suter, and you heard Billy Jaffe talk about that, shoots the puck as he's joining the attack. It goes off of Mark Fain's stick over a screen. Cam Talbot. Good transition. Aggressive D up the ice. Bang. First it goal. It's been a while for Ryan Suter. That's his first goal in 38 games. It's interesting listening to Mikey O today about Ryan Suter. Ooh. Wow. That's a major hit. Korpakoski is hurt. He is still down. A penalty on the way. I think it's going to be the orders for the retaliation on the hit because the referee did not have his, his arm up. This is a tough one right here. Eric Greiber doing what he should do. Unfortunately, Eric Greiber was the guy that gave the pass. And Eric Greiber is headed to the penalty box. Laura Korpakoski is up as Dumba came flying across and hit him. Flying across, initial contact from this angle right when I look at it, is on the head. No call from the official, come across, bang, that's head contact right there. And that's why Eric Greiber goes after Matthew Dumba. One more time, if we look at that first angle again, I don't want to sink Matthew Dumba, but when you look at this first angle again, the initial contact is up and right on the head. And the referee doesn't make the call. And the Wild get on the power play for the first time in this game. Where Eric Riba sitting in the penalty box. Eric wasn't happy that he gave the pass, but he was more upset that his own guy got hit at the head. And nobody did anything until he had to. Winnipeg was one for five in that game, or the Wild one for five in the game in Winnipeg. Their power play is ranked 11th in the league. The Edmonton Oilers penalty kill is fifth best on the road. Gramlin against Letestu. Suter. Right out in front for Pominville, and it just went off the end of his stick. Koivu goes cross ice. Parise picks it up again. Palmonville parked in front. Suter with a wrist shot off the end boards. Backhand attempt by Palmonville doesn't work. Suter able to keep that puck in. Being watched by Letestu. Parise. As Koivu and Palmonville along with Granlin and Suter. This is Suter stepping into a slap shot. Screen in front by Palmonville. The puck ends up on the corner. Koivu plays it back to Granlin. By Kyle Granlin. For Koivu. He was tied up there by Letestu. And the puck is sent down the ice by Mark Fain. Very good weak side help from Mark Letestu on that slot play. 109 left to go in the man advantage. Minnesota with six power play goals. Two of them have come here at the XL Energy Center. Davidson turns, plays it off the boards, but he can't get it out. Now an opportunity for Ryan Nugent Hopkins. He's got Clefbaum catching up shorthanded. Oscar Clefbaum gets the puck. You will dump it into the corner. Waste some more time. Ryan Nugent Hopkins on the attack. Ryan Nugent Hopkins leads this team in takeaways. And David Dubnik makes a shorthanded save there. The second shot for the Edmonton Oilers. Lander on the intercept will backhand that puck down the ice. And he's going to change. Marco Scandella leads the rush for Minnesota. Across the blue line. He will dish off. Get the puck back again. He scores. 
Marco Scandella power play goal. It's 2-0 as he got the pass from Thomas Vanek. Marco Scandella starts the play and then finishes the play. Comes up the ice, 17 seconds left in the penalty. You take what the opposition gives you, so he just dishes it off and then drives towards the net. It's a good play by Scandella. It's not a good play defensively by Mark Fain. Mark Fain has got to get in this position right here. He's got to have Scandella go to the net. Sekera goes over to, to confront the play and the pass over on the side of the boards. Mark Fain's got to get in front of Scandella, not let him get to the net. His first goal of the season and first in his last nine. Thomas Vanek gets the helper. He's got three on the year and a four-game point streak. Marco Scandella, as you mentioned, he is as hot as they can come right now. Leaves the team in plus-minus. That won't help us plus-minus because it was on the power play. But that's a power play goal. It's just, honestly, it's too easy. And this is the stuff that Jim Johnson, who's in charge of the penalty kill, will drive him crazy. He doesn't mind if a team score because their power play executes perfectly and, you know, they just are better than your penalty kill. But right there, you've got to make it tough on the opposition. Scandella walks in untouched, and that's really not what you want at all. Scandella had 11 goals last year. Chris Porter down the wing. Porter stops up, plays it back to the point. Brodine waiting for it there. He will give it to Matt Dumbo. Fires a shot towards the net. That gets deflected wide. Holla plays it back to the point. Dumba steps into a one-timer that snapped his stick in half. Oscar Clefbaum will give it to Darnell Nurse. 9.35 left to go here in the first period. The Wild with two goals on five shots. The Oilers with two shots on Devin Dubnik. McDavid, Yakupov, and Pouliot up front now against Thomas Vanek. Fontaine and Coyle. Fontaine around the boards for Charlie Coyle. He is tied up there by Riva. Vanek fires a shot through traffic, and that one goes wide. Coyle with the rebound, played it to the middle. It was picked off there by McDavid, and McDavid gets hauled down. And the Oilers are going to get their first power play of this hockey game. McDavid cutting from the net, drop pass, Yakupov, opportunity score. Coming in was Taylor Hall to make it a 2-1 game. That's why your goalie has to hustle out of the net and you've got to hustle on the ice. In that situation, when there's a delayed penalty call, Taylor Hall jumps on the ice with Cam Talbot coming to the bench. And I like the fact on this play that the Oilers just kept on it. They didn't give up on it. Just kept making the play and Connor McDavid with really very little space. Again, makes a play to the net. Yakupov makes a play to the net. Inside the numbers now, the Minnesota Wild, they're debating this. They're debating this because of, they thought they had control right there by Devin Dubnik on the Yakupov shot. They're complaining, Ryan Suter is doing the complaining. That one, I do not believe is challengeable. And this is going to be a goal for the Edmonton Oilers. And for Taylor Hall, he had a power play goal in the game against Los Angeles. And now he's got three points in his last three games and he gets his fourth goal of the year and fourth career goal against the Minnesota Wild. Well, Connor McDavid and Nail Yakupov continue their streaks. They're both at six games now. Pizza 73, your hockey feast favorite. Score a big pizza and tasty wings at Pizza 73. McDavid now has 10 points on the year. Neil Yakupov has got nine. And Taylor Hall has given his team some life. After giving up a power play goal, he has come back with his fourth of the year, and it's 2-1. Teddy Purcell chips it ahead. He'll pick it up himself. Purcell. Lander. Slepeshev. Lepeshev keeps it in for Purcell. He was checked by Miko Koivu. Tied up behind the net. The puck's still alive. It comes free. Scandella will get it to Zucker. He'll go cross ice for Nate Prosser. Prosser trying to find Nino Niederreiter, who was in behind the defense. Niederreiter. 
checked by Slepeshev. The puck comes free. Sekera drops it back, and Fane has got it. Heavy, heavy, right. It's a heavy game, even though this is not the Minnesota Wild, a very a big and strong team. But Jay Woodcroft, talking to Jay Woodcroft yesterday about the Minnesota Wild, the assistant coach for the Oilers said, they are hockey strong. I thought that was a great term. Hall cuts to the middle, checked by Suter, but there is Kluckbaum to carry on. His shot is blocked. Pacarin and Sticks gone. He's got a head to the bench. Seven and a half minutes left to go as the puck hops over their leading goal getter, Zach Parisi. Parisi tied for second in the league in goals. He's got seven. Another broken stick. This time it's Yakupov. Just get off the ice if you nail Yakupov or go get a new one. Suter back to Granlin gets it back again. The puck goes wide. Parisi was providing the screen in front. Yakupov's got a new cue. They have great net front presence in Minnesota Wild tonight. Clefbaugh. Hammers that puck in. McDavid waiting for it against Pominville. It comes free. Suter takes a hit there from Benoit Pouliot. Davidson fires it right on to Devin Dubnik. Jonas Brodin has got it behind his own net. He'll play it off the boards. Picked off by McDavid. McDavid, great move. McDavid still has it. Here's McDavid. Another chance. Dubnik makes the save and he'll cover up. If you don't think that guy's something special, you don't know what you're watching. This kid is something to watch. We'll be back to the XL Energy Center. Taylor Hall celebrates his fourth goal. Welcome back. January 14th, Devin Dubnik was traded for a third round pick acquired by Minnesota and his life in hockey have never been the same since. Look at what he was able to accomplish last year with the Wild and it led to an opportunity of going to the NHL Awards, won the Bill Masterton Trophy which best exemplifies perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication. And he joked this morning, guys, that in his acceptance thank speech, he was going to actually thank Carey Price for not being nominated. Otherwise, Carey <laughs> seemed to win everything else. So he's got his hockey and his sense of humor still here. With Minnesota. And he's got a six-year contract worth $26 million. That doesn't hurt. Nope. Holla. And offside is Chris Porter. You know your business. We know how to protect it. Inside Insurance, specializing in the oil and gas and construction industries. InsideInsurance.ca Ryan Nugent Hopkins, three points in his last two games. He saw his limelight. Drew score a very important goal yes. because the Oilers were... Kind of running around, 7.25 the time of the first goal, and then just a couple of minutes later, it was a power play goal by Scandella. And they need, it's, it's helped them settle down a little bit, give them a little bit of energy, which they needed. That second goal kind of sapped them for a bit. Shot total low, five for the Wild, four for the Oilers. Nugent Hopkins gets to the puck first, chops it back for Rob Klinkham. Klinkhammer gives it back to him. Nugent Hopkins goes cross ice. Here's second from a sharp angle. Sekera has it again down low. Rob Klinkhammer has got a blade problem or his leg problem. One he of the two. Trying to get his way as quickly as possible to the bench. Niederreiter's shot goes over top of the cage. It looks like a leg problem, not a skate problem. Zucker comes out of the corner. Plays it back to the point. Jonas Brodin trying to get around Teddy Purcell. Can't do it. Kept in by Koivu. Niederreiter goes for a skate. He'll give it to Brodin. The Wild making changes. As Brodin fires the puck around the board. Sekera is there waiting for it. Ian Fane on the blue line. Fane goes cross ice looking for Slepeshev. Lori Korpakoski who took that hit from Matt Dumba. To try and get a... Update on his situation. And now Rob Klinkhammer is going down the hallway as well. We are hoping that is just an equipment problem. No, we'll wait and see. It's not. He's, he's getting it. He's labored. It's his leg. Opportunity now for Teddy Purcell. Purcell sends it around the boards. Dubnik slows it down. Matt Dumba chops it to the other side for Coyle. Charlie Coyle checked by Slepeshev. This is Brodine for Vanek. Thomas Vanek can't get by Yakupov. Yep. Slepeshev runs into Dumba as Darnell Nurse fires the puck in. Oilers making a change. Good job by Yakupov to keep it in. Yakupov behind the net. Dale Yakupov 
Connor McDavid works it up top for Davidson. Davidson thought about the one-timer, then the pass, but Pouliot came back and helped him out. Davidson fires that buck in. Devin Dubnik can't control it. Pouliot against Dumba. Yakubov from the corner. McDavid behind the net. Feeds it out in front for Davidson. It was tipped away before he could get the shot. Gremlin moving in with Parisi. Drop pass for Parisi. He'll go cross ice trying to find Jason Pominville. You've got to sort out the attack all the time. You've got to be talking and identifying and locking on to guys. Penley coming up for the Oilers. And it comes with three minutes and 55 seconds left to go in a period. Oilers are going to be down one man. In fact, they're down two more after Rob Klinkhammer. It just in the corner. You just see him. He just goes down, gets twisted up. And then he gets up limping. The owners are shorthanded, and they're shorthanded. Lori Korpakoski and now Rob Plinkhammer. And we'll be back to Minnesota. Brandon Davidson in the penalty box. It's going to be a hooking penalty. And this is where it's happening right. Yeah. I explain where you see a hook there, and I will give you a dollar. Because I don't see one there. I think that's a soft call. Second power play for the Wild. They're one for one. Granlin goes cross size. Parisi shot his stop. Parisi follows up and puts it wide. Zach Parisi playing in his 700th NHL game. Letestu and Lander started this penalty kill. They will head off. Connor McDavid and Benoit Pouliot are out there now with Griba and Oscar Kleffbaum. Pumminville. Plays it around the boards. Franlin and Griba come together. Koivu comes up with it. Centered it out in front. He went down. And the order's able to clear. They quickly change their penalty killers. And Ryan Nugent Hopkins is out there now with Teddy Purcell. Nurse and Sekera. As Parisi brings it across the line. Drop pass. Nugent Hopkins takes that. Bounces it off the boards and sends it the length of the ice. Davidson's penalty down to 54 seconds as Scandella, who had the power play goal, passes off for Spurgeon, who plays it around the boards. Niederreiter waiting for it there. Niederreiter and Zucker. Spurgeon. Niederreiter is out in front. Vanek trying to get it to him. Nurse ties up with Niederreiter. The puck's still alive. Zucker in for it. Back to the point it comes. Scandella. Goes to Jared Spurgeon, moves to the middle. He dishes off. Vanek steps into a shot. Niederreiter providing the screen. Niederreiter again, plays it back to the points. Spurgeon on the near side. He'll give it to Vanek. Checked by Sekera. Niederreiter trying to push off and get some space. Here is a hard shot and a great glove save as Rooker let it go. Talbot makes the glove. Couple of things we want to show you here. Connor McDavid defensively. He is in the face-off circle. He's in there for support. Now he's got to work his way back out front. Reads the play perfectly, intercepts, protects the puck, and throws it down the ice. Nice defensive play. And then right here, your goaltender most nights has to be your best penalty killer. A nice terrific save by Cam Talbot. It flashes brilliant level. Eight shots for the Minnesota Wild. They like that play though. That little high but come around the net, stay stay low, work the puck. They'll have that guy center out or slide out, I should say, to the high slot and then drill it. Three shots for the Wild on that power play. They're one for two. Davidson's back on the ice. Pouliot can't get it by Fontaine. Greibel will just backhand it down the ice. Nice. His draw weight is yes. Brodine has to play it. Pouliot. Benoit Pouliot on a three-game point streak of his own. Yakupov has room. Here comes Nail Yakupov. Across the blue line, snaps a shot that was blocked by Brodin. Dumba can't get it by Yakupov. Yakupov goes cross ice. Fain snapped his stick as he tried to let a shot go. This has not been a banner first period for Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Final minute. 
the lead offside coming as Amandel has it clear. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, eh? <laughs> I thought that was you yelling. <laughs> That's a referee or a linesman, I should say, with a booming voice. There is Lori Korpakoski back. Good to see after he took the hard hit from Matthew Dumba. Went in, was examined, and he's ready to go again. And the Wild they had too many men. And somebody come over and serve that, so the orders late in the first period get a power play opportunity. 55.1 seconds left to go. On the red sweaters, I see one, two, three, four, five. And coming out is six. And he's going to get involved right in the play. Good timing on the pass, bad timing on the change. 1904, the time of the penalty. Lander will line up against Koibu. Oh, it's left bomb, Burchell, Nugent Hopkins out there to start this power play. Spurgeon fires it around the boards and gets it by Teddy Burchell. If you haven't noticed already, these boards are light. Left bomb goes right up the middle for Teddy Burchell. Burchell dishes off for Lander. Lander. Gives it to Purcell, back up top, Nugent Hopkins, left bomb. Oscar left bomb. Throws it across the ice, Teddy Purcell's got it. Ball in the high slot, back up top it comes, left bomb. Sets into a one-time shot, that gets deflected wide. Spurgeon, spin move on Hall. And the puck is sent down the ice. A chance for one last rush in this period, we're down to 15 seconds. Left bomb, leads the way for Edmonton. Drops it back for Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins near side for Hall. Hall stops up, plays it back to the point. It got by Clefbaum, and that will do it for the period. The Oilers will have a minute and five of power play time. That goal, David Amber, Minnesota has now given up 11 first period goals. That's the most in the National Hockey League. Uh, coming to you on uh, Sportsnet, a uh, great statue of Herb Brooks, who uh, might be watching down here in the state of hockey to see uh, Minnesota take on Edmonton. Difference is one through one period of play. And joined by uh, Richard Nurse, father of Darnell Nurse, former CFL player, who's uh, here with your wife, Kathy. You're watching your son play in the NHL for the first time. Uh, what do you think so far? That's a great experience. You know what? He's out there. He's battling. You know, first period, he's getting his feet under him and just getting the feel for the game and the speed of the game right now. Now, do you watch him very closely, or are you more watching the game and then see what happens when he's involved? I'm a dad. you got to watch the, You got to watch what he's doing out there. So, yeah, I watch him very closely. Well, you are a dad, and I'm sure dads are some of the first people that sons come to when maybe things don't go well. Uh, Darnell had a strong camp and was assigned to the minors. Did you speak to him just, just about dealing with things like that at a young age? Yeah, I mean, you know what? I told him at the end of the day, you know, you have an opportunity. You go down there you make the best of it you go down and you play hard and you compete and you come back up here and do your job but what can you say about your family your wife played basketball your other daughter played Kia's playing basketball Darnell's in the NHL you played in the CFL I mean how did you guys get so athletic you know what we were blessed you know what it's a lot about accountability and quite frankly God just blessed us Richard thank you for your time and enjoy watching Darnell the rest of the thank you thanks for having me all right, Gene, thanks very much. Six minutes and 10 seconds for Darnell in that first period as we take a look at the scoring summary brought to you by Warley Parsons Cord. Visit WarleyParsonsCord.com to join our leading industrial construction team and enjoy great benefits and a safe work environment. We have Ryan Suter scoring the first goal of the game, his first of the year from Jason Zucker, and then Scandella on the power play, who is just hot as can be. We'll see he's on a, on a point scoring streak. Best plus minus on the team. And then Taylor Hall on delayed penalty. He jumps on. Yakupov and McDavid get the assist. Taylor gets the goal. And Yakupov and McDavid now six games for the point. And for Neil Yakupov, that ties a career high. Uh, six straight games with at least a point. And he may have an opportunity right here to get more as the owners have a minute and five of power play time remaining on the too many men penalty taken by the Wild at the end of the first period. Nino Niederreiter will be serving it. Let's you, Yakupov, Pouliot, McDavid, and Sekera start this power play for the Edmonton Oilers as they trail by one. Hall is up front with Koibu. Suter and Spurgeon on the blue line. Penalty kill that was number one last year for the Minnesota Wild. 
currently ranked 22nd in the league at 77.3%. Yakubov drops it back to Sekera. Sekera throws a wrist shot through traffic. Yakubov gets the rebound. McDavid plays it back to Sekera. They play catch. McDavid fakes the shot, and then he let it go, and it hits Suter. And the Oilers unable to keep it in at the blue line. It is still free. Now 15 seconds left to go in the man advantage as Yakupov brings it in. He'll dish off to McDavid. McDavid go, 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 go. for Pouliot. Pouliot. One shot for the Oilers on that man advantage. But the Oilers keep control. This is Letestu. Back to the point. Hard shot by Gleiba. The puck goes up in the air and is picked up there by Niederreiter. The Minnesota Wild will take on Chicago here on Friday, a team that has eliminated them from the postseason three straight years. The Oilers, meantime, are going to go home after this game, and they will await the Montreal Canadiens, who are in Vancouver tonight trying to tie a record held by two other teams, the Leafs and the Buffalo Sabres, 10-0 to start the season. Yeah, Tom McCullen talks a lot about a belief system. You would have to think the Montreal Canadiens' belief system right now is at an all-time high. You watch the way they play, that's a confident group. Turning is Nugent Hopkins. He fires that puck towards the net. Rob Klinkhammer left the game with an injury. And so now the owners are going to have to scramble to fill that spot. Pakarinen was the guy who took the shift right there. Lori Korpakoski, though, as we mentioned, is back. He is with Lander and Teddy Purcell. The studio disagreed with my I was going to say, that sparked a debate okay. about the hit by Dumbo, whether it was a shot to the head or the contact initially was shoulder and then went up to the head. So And so it goes. Purcell driving towards the net. And Dubnik makes the save. Well, our first score and win winner, courtesy of Safeway and Kraft Dinner, is in Arcan of Edmonton, who has won the premium Bluetooth audio speaker by House of Marley. And that's on the fourth goal of the season by Taylor Hall. It came at 11.09, and uh, Cognac each getting a <laughs> point. <laughs> Keep their streak going. I'll let that go. That was a radio station in Edmonton. I think some of the fans had floated that idea. It may be on a t-shirt soon. We'll see. Darnell Nurse off the end boards for Pouliot, who centered it out in front. Intended for Yakubov, who was steered away by Ryan Suter. But this line keeps the pressure on. Yakubov with a shot deflected. That hit Charlie Coyle, but Devin Dubnik made the save. Now that's what you have to do against the defense of the Minnesota Wild. I'm not just talking about the defense. I'm talking about all five guys in the zone. They're very structured until that shot goes to the net. And after that shot goes to the net, if you can recover, you'll get them scrambling. Look at the numbers. Three guys over the one. But now they settle back out. They've got their position. But the shot on goal, everybody starts to look for the puck. They're able to clear it, but it just comes very close to going past Devin Dubnik. McDavid against Coyle. Right off the faceoff. Pouliot raced in and got a shot. One of the areas that the Edmonton Oilers have really improved over the last five or six games is face-offs. Everybody's involved, Benoit Pouliot, right off the bat. That's a plan, right off the bat. Know what you're gonna do going into the dry. It's a focus that the coaching staff works on, centers work on. In fact, everybody has to know their jobs, and that's a little bit of a set play right there for Benoit Pouliot. Not easy to do against the Minnesota Wild team that is ranked eighth in the league in face-offs. McDavid will line up against Koibu this time. And from the face-off, it's controlled. Another shot this time by Yakupov, and that one goes wide. Sekera, McDavid, around the boards it goes. Fain pinching in, back at the point, covering his Yakubov, fires a blast. Dubnik kicks that aside, as McDavid was knocked down by Suter. Sekera intercepts that pass, he'll go cross ice, find Letestu, wires it around the boards. 11 shots for the Oilers, 8 for the Wild. Backhanded in by Zucker. Niederreier checks Davidson. Zucker from the corner. Davidson plays it off the boards and gets it out to center. Suter will give it to Prosser. Nate Prosser chips the puck in. Eric Rival will get there first ahead of Jason Zucker. Letestu with it now. He'll play it off the boards. Prosser able to keep it in at the blue line. Davidson 
Takes a look, gives it to Greiber, round the board, Slepeshev. He has trouble getting it out as well. Charlie Coyle in there, battling along with Scandella. Letestu. Back to the point it comes. Shot comes from Chris Porter, handled easily by Cam Talbot. Now the puck flipped in the air. It comes down for Slepeshev. He is given a bump by Scandella. Porter drop pass for Carter. Carter looks for Coyle. It was behind him, and the orders come back the other way with Nugent Hopkins, Hall, and Slepeshev. Nugent Hopkins flips it into the corner. Hall going after it. Crosser. Sees the puck go by him. Hall in control right out in foot. There's a shot. Scores! Iro Pakarinen makes it a 2-2 game. Pakarinen gets his first goal of the season in his second game. Good entry in the zone, but Taylor Hall makes the play right behind the net. A little steal of the puck. Controls it. Now he's going to cut back, create some space for himself. And Ilo Pacarinen reads the play really well. There's the play by Taylor Hall. He gets it, controls it, cuts back. Now we look at all the space he has gained. And then Pacarinen rolls into a spot where he knows that he can be available for the pass. Doesn't stand in the slot. He comes over to the puck and then snaps it in. Pacarinen filling in for Rob Klinkhammer on that Nugent Hopkins line. Gets his first point of the season. He played 17 games last year at a goal and two assists. Nurse gives it to Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins stops in the corner, checked by Brodeen. And knocks him down. Gets the puck to Parisi who feeds Pominville. Pominville to the middle it goes for Granlin. Mikhail Granlin Brown behind the net for Parisi is checked by Darnell Nurse. Tied up there. The puck's still loose. It comes to Hall. Hall can't get it out. Dumba lets a shot go. And Talbot makes the save. Nugent Hopkins gathers the rebound. He'll give it to Pacarina and end of the shift. Sends it down the ice. Pacarina played six minutes and ten seconds in that game against Los Angeles on the fourth line. Now he finds himself in the top six. Suter. Paula lays it back to Spurgeon. Ryan Suter. Paula backhands it in, giving chase is Fontaine. Fane for Sekera. Gets by him, comes to Nail Yakupov, who gives it back to Sekera. Checked by Spurgeon, who is pinching. Spurgeon trying to feed it out in front. Back to the point. Ryan Suter waiting for it there. He'll play it deep. Bennett went off the net, and the owners get control. This is Yakupov, and offside is Connor McDavid. Ido Pakarinen gets the goal. Taylor Hall now has two assists, and we're tied at two. Two points, that is. Nino Niederreiter of the Minnesota Wild is a colorful personality when you spend some time talking to him, and that uh, shows through in his uh, saw collection. He now has his own Twitter handle, more than 1,000 followers, at Nino underscore socks as he's been doing this since the season began he's not sure how many he has but every game day he has to take a picture of it and his teammates think it's a lot of work and have told him hey bud it sucks to be you <laughs> oh, oh man <laughs> sharp angle shot and a rebound for Korpakoski didn't make it through and the wild come back the other way Fontaine gains the blue line he will shoot it in with Halla and Vanek right up the middle and down into wild territory 11 shots for the Wild, 12 for the Oilers. We're tied at two. Hero Pacarina gets his first goal since November the 7th, 2014. Rob Klinkhammer will not return to this hockey game, so the Oilers are down a man just like they were against Los Angeles when Justin Schultz left the game. Pacarina, Nugent Hopkins, and Hall are out there now. <laughs> Darnell Nurse and Oscar Kleffbaum on the blue line. Scandella behind the net. He'll send it around the boards. The puck gets by Nurse, but that's coming back on the icing call. Well, by shopping at Swaf Safeway, Mike Anand of Edmonton won the Husqvarna High Wheel Push Mower, courtesy of Safeway and Kraft Dinner. 
on the goal by Iro Pakarinen. And here's the goal by Iro Pakarinen, the good work by Taylor Hall, but I want you to watch in the slot area as Pakarinen is just going to come over and he's going to find the space, find that little area where nobody's covering and you know the puck can get you. The shot does go off of Matthew Dumba and deflects by Devin Dubnik, but still a good play by Hall and a nice read by Iro Pakarinen. And the owners have come back, they trail 2-0. At the 9.30 mark of the first period. And now it's a tie game with Darnell Nurse right leading the rush. Dumps the puck in, goes after it. Now he'll peel off. Hall from the corner. Hall against Suter. Hall. Feeds it up top. Nurse waiting for it. He'll play it down low. Koivu to Suter. Can't get it by Hall. Koivu tries again, this time to Nino Niederreiter. He is checked by Clefbaum. It gets it to Koivu, and again, another oh. stick snapping in this hockey game. Goodness. Is it that dry here? <laughs> Does it affect carbon? <laughs> Clefbaum up the wing for Pouliot. Kyle Grandman against Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Look at Nugent Hopkins steal that puck yeah. away. Yeah. Parisi works inside him. Gets the puck back. This is the work you have to put in and get out of the zone. Darnell Nurse finds an opening. Looking for Nugent Hopkins. Tipped away. Clefbaum carries on. He will flip that puck in as the Oilers make a line change. 11.15 to go here in the second period. First of three between these teams. They won't hook up again until February the 18th. That game is in Edmonton. We'll be back here on March the 10th to wrap up the series. Cotswood Interiors, everything a furniture store should be. Inspiring selection, complimentary design service, and quality you can trust. And a reminder that Safeway's featured participating product for tonight's telecast is Kraft Dinner. Oilers looking for their first victory of the season against a Central Division foe. There's, there's... We're talking to Eric Greiber today, and he was talking about the fact that if you look at the Western Conference, there's no easy nights. There's no nights where you go, it's for either any team. You go, well, this is this is going to be one we should win, no problem. Especially in the Central Division. It is a tough, tough division. And it's a wild 5-2-1. and one. They take on two divisional foes in the next couple of games, Friday and Saturday, back-to-backs -back with St. Louis and Chicago. Jumba, slap pass. Tipped away by Secker, and then he takes a hard hit from Granlin. Parisi runs in to Connor McDavid, and the Wild keep it in. Dumbo with the puck again, this time on net. A blocker save by Cam Talbot. Pominville for Granlin. Granlin throws it towards the net. Parisi looking for the rebound. He dumps Secker right in front of Cam Talbot. McDavid wants to get that puck out. Can't do it against Pominville. Granlin with Parisi in front. Mikhail Granlin. To Zach Parisi gets the puck back to Granlin. Granlin checked by Sekera. Sekera took the puck away, but then lost it to Granlin. He tried to center it. Fain is there. Yakupov wants to get that puck out and does. And McDavid on his horse, but Dumba had the angle. Oilers making a change. Brodeen brings it across the line. Jonas Brodeen snaps a shot. Talbot makes the save. No rebound for Chris Porter. Rogers orders hockey from St. Paul, Minnesota, right here on Sportsnet. Welcome back, Scotiabank. Wednesday night hockey features an all-Canadian matchup as Sean Monaghan of Calgary Flames visit Eric Carlson in the Ottawa Centre. Catch all the action tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Gene, we've got an all-Canadian matchup coming up on Thursday at Rexall as Montreal is in town, and then the Oilers will welcome Calgary for a game on Saturday. Right now, 9.55 to go in the second period in a 2-2 game. Vanek with Coyle and Porter. Porter in front. He was tied up there by Griba. Slepeshev starts back the other way for the Oilers. And look at Letestu drive the middle. Puck just out of his reach. Flip out down the ice. And it comes right on to Cam Talbot. Letestu. Left side sends the puck around the boards. Slepeshev gets there first.
Thomas Vanek flips that one high, and it was just out of the reach of Jason Zucker. Korpakoski. He's tied up just outside the blue line. And Drew, you talked about the momentum swings in this game, and as the Oilers tied the game up, and now the pushback is coming from Minnesota. And the Oilers came out great. The first five minutes, it was all of their period. They did everything right. They were moving the puck efficiently. They had the offensive zone pressure. Now it's just swung the other way, 180-degree difference. Teddy Burchill will get it to Oscar Kleffbaum. Darnell Nurse flips it down the ice. And it's coming back on the icing. You know your business. We know how to protect it. Inside Insurance, specializing in the oil and gas and construction industries. InsideInsurance.ca How similar are these teams? Well, down the middle, very, very young down the middle. Granlin, Coyle, Hala, and Koivu. He's the elder statesman, as is Mark Letestu. On the other side with McDavid, Nugent Hopkins, and Anton Lander. Young down the middle, that means you're going to have some good players for many years. And that's where you want to build from the goaltender out. All its championship teams have that. Commonville shot gets tipped wide. And you know, that was one of the weak areas for the Edmonton Oilers in the past years. And now it's their strength because you've got another guy in Bakersfield in the form of Leon Dreisaitl. Thinking the same thing. Nurse. To Lander, he will send it down the ice. That will allow a line change. From talking to Nurse this morning, you know, he's a guy that it will play aggressively. He said he has to kind of dial it back, worry about defense first, and the offense will come later. Hear John Shannon talk about it. Letting the game come to, come to him. That is exactly what Jim Johnson, assistant coach, told Darnell Nurse. He said, just relax, let the play come to you, have fun, and then just go play. It was funny, we were talking to him, and he, he said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to play that way. He said, if you'd asked me that question last year, yeah. try, can you dial it back? He said, no, nah, I probably wouldn't have been able to, but he has learned. Talk to Eric Greiber sitting beside him. And I said, what advice you, would you give me? He said, just take it easy, big boy. Just take <laughs> it easy. And that's, you know, Eric kind of plays that type of game. He's a very relaxed guy, but it helps his game. You've got other people out there who can help you. And for Dar Darnell Nurse, he knows, he has to know. But the four other guys on the ice are going to help him out. Shooter down the boards. Gets it by second. The race is on now. And a good defensive play there by Fain to take it away from Niederreiter. Niederreiter, though, gets it back to the point. Has it again. Plays it behind the net. Koivu, the captain for the Minnesota Wild, comes out of the corner. They go Koivu. Back up top it goes. There is Spurgeon shot. And that one doesn't make it through. Shooter will keep it in. Zucker. Checked by Hall. Hall gets stumped. The Wild keep the pressure on. Niederreiter comes all the way to the far side for a shooter. He throws it towards the net. Zucker looking for the rebound. Denied by Talbot. Koivu. A nice move around. Sekera plays it back to the point. Suter will give it to Spurgeon. Spurgeon, rich shot through traffic. And that hit Nino Niederreiter. Bounce right back to Spurgeon. Once again, the Wild keeping the pressure on. Here's Zucker to Koivu. Koivu. Still has it. He'll feed it across the Suter. Suter played it off the end boards. It hits the back of the net. Fain plays it around the boards. That may get it out. But no, Suter races over to keep it in. Nate Prosser on the ice now. As the Wild able to make a change with possession. He's Finally, Taylor guy. Hall, who is gassed, has got to get that puck out and does. That's why we talked about the key, fourth key of the game for the Wild. Get on your bike. Their cycle game is very, very good. Scandella gets it to Fontaine. Fontaine is checked. The puck squirts free. An opportunity for Bannett. Couldn't get the shot away. Scandella might. Scandella with a wrist shot. Banned on it. Gets it again. Now he'll step into a slap shot. Rebound in front. Goes just wide. Bannett. Howla. Taylor Hall prevents that. Taylor Hall needs to get off the ice. He's gassed. Fontaine out in front. Can't get the shot away. Howla. Bannett. Thomas Bannett feeds it in front. Fontaine. Banging away, Nugent Hopkins prevented a good shot, and finally that puck goes down the ice. Paul Nugent Hopkins able to get to the bench. McDavid bounces it off the boards for Yakupov. He will get it deep. Dubnik stops it in behind the net. Plays it to Nate Prosser. Prosser right up the middle it goes. And that's brought in offside. Rogers orders hockey right here on Sportsnet.
Welcome back. This season, SportsCheck has teamed up with Rogers NHL Game Center Live to help their customers follow their team on any screen from anywhere. Spend $120 or more on NHL merchandise at any SportsCheck location and receive a free trial of Rogers NHL Game Center Live. Visit rogers.com slash NHL slash SportsCheck for details. Conditioning early, Drew Nugent Hopkins last shift, two minutes and 21 seconds, not by design. That's why you go to the gym in the offseason. That's why Gene does. Well, he needs it. You seen that man eat? Oh, man. Shots are 15-12 in favor of the Wild, just over five minutes left to go in the second period. Those are, that's a long shift, though. That's a long shift when it's stopping and starting and short little strides. You don't, you're never able to stretch it all out. Battling against another man, that is a tough, tough shift. Kyle Granlin, who's had a good night in the faceoff circle, wins another draw, this time against McDavid. Parisi. Gets help from Granlin. Yakupov can't get it by Ryan Suter. Davidson to Pouliot. Pouliot feeds McDavid. McDavid across the line with Davidson driving the net. Here's Pouliot following up. Benoit Pouliot lays it back to the point. Davidson wasn't sure where the puck was, but good job by Brandon Davidson as the puck gets knocked down. Connor yeah, McDavid. He jumped in Sorry, short. Partner. Yep. Connor McDavid's been very, very good tonight. He makes plays all the time. He makes plays you don't think he's going to be able to make. Right there, throws it to the middle to Davidson jumping in, but Benoit Pouliot follows it up. Suter helps out on this and blocks the shot, blocks the pass and the shot. But still, a near chance, all because McDavid is not afraid to make those plays in those tight areas. Face-off win, Nurse sends the puck in deep. Kevin Dubnik will play it himself, around the boards it goes. Chris Porter waiting for it. Boyle checked by Korpakoski. But Porter starts away with Carter, fires the puck on net. Cam Talbot's not going to take any chances with Ryan Carter there, doing a little jawing with Darnell Nurse. Well, when you look at the way Darnell Nurse has played, the first period I thought it was a bit scrambly, and it was scrambly for everybody. I think Darnell settled down nicely in this second period. One thing, he's a big man. He's a guy who's not afraid to get inside and be in the face of the other players, and now he's starting to move and be a little bit more confident as this game rolls on, even though he's had to spend a considerable amount of time in his own zone. Six foot four, 213 pounds. He's, he's, when you stand beside him, he's a big dude. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Zucker. Trying to spring Niederreiter, but Niederreiter could not get out in time, and it's offside. Nino Niederreiter from Switzerland. Most goals by Swiss hockey players in one season. Nino Niederreiter, 24 last year. He was a big reason they went to the playoffs last year. They had that super surge. Mark Streit. And as we start rolling down the list, Nino Niederreiter on there twice, 2013-14. A very valuable player for the Minnesota Wild. Career high for him last year. Has the puck now right out in front oh. and tipped by Zucker wide. And he ran into Cam Talbot. Koivu. Throws it towards the net. Nita Ryder providing that screen. Teddy Purcell over skates. Nita Ryder gets it to Koivu. Snaps a shot. Rebound. Great oh. save by Cam Talbot. His best of the game as he absolutely robbed Jason Zucker. Further evidence that Cam Talbot was a brilliant pickup by Peter Shirelli. And you've got to get pucks out when they come up to you on the boards. You cannot keep putting this pressure on your goaltender. What a shot. Shot for a rebound, that's all that is. That's a shot for a rebound. Use the goaltender to pass the puck to the man in front of the net. What a super save second effort by Cam Talbot. If Teddy Purcell gets that puck out in the boards, Cam Talbot doesn't have to bail his man out. Granlin lost the draw this time to Anton Lander around the boards. Teddy Purcell, another opportunity to get it out. The Wild have done a good job of keeping the Oilers pinned up in their own zone in this period. The Oilers have the only goal. Commonville from the corner. Granlin behind the net. Granlin works it back to Spurgeon. Spurgeon hopped over Kropakoski. Got it to Granlin. Mikhail Granlin with a shot. Parisi was looking for the tip. Kenny Purcell on the far side. Under pressure. Gets a little help from Lander who gets it to Griba. Now to Sekera. 
Sakharov uses the boards, gets the puck down the ice. Oilers will get a change in, under three minutes left to go here in the second period of a 2-2 game. Pollock trying to get around Darnell Nurse. Nurse takes him into the boards. Fontaine carrying on. Nugent Hopkins watching him. Nurse without his stick. Takarinen can't get it out. Bosser's shot, that one goes wide. Scandella on the near side gets it to Halla behind the net. Halla will get it to Vanek. Thomas Vanek, sharp angle shot, hit the side of the cage. Halla from the corner, turns, lets the shot go. Cam Talbot, glove save, hangs on. Protect your engine in temperatures as low as 40 below with Mobile One Advanced Fuel Economy. Mobile One. Energy lives here. It has been really all Minnesota Wild in this period, even though the Oilers have been able to tie it up. Shouldn't surprise us, though, all season long, or so far this season, I should say, because it is early, first month. The Wild have been the better second period team against their opponents. 18 shots fired the way of Cam Talbot. He's got 16 saves. Racing after it, Yakupov. Charlie Coyle got there first. Can't get it by McDavid. Now he'll get another opportunity. And the net comes off the moorings and covers Devin Dubnik. As that one just fell straight over him. Hard for him to make himself small. He's yeah, not a small guy. Big guy, Devin Dubnik, without a doubt. He's fine. Fun with it. Going to the net, puck behind the net. Now Yakupov just runs into it and crushes or tries to at least, Devin Dubnik. He's trying to, I'm not sure what he's trying to do there, either get away from the net or he just jumped on top of it and bang, it goes down. Nets are a bit top heavy, as is Neil Yakupov. See, man, <laughs> see that dumb in there trying to keep the crossbar from hitting the back of the head of Devin Dubnik. He's battling a knee injury, he doesn't need a shot in the head. Fain sends it in. Rodine waiting for it, checked by Pouliot, gets the puck though to Niederreiter. Niederreiter, his pass for Scandella, ends up on the stick of Koivu, dumps the puck in. Davidson gets checked, Niederreiter from the corner. Jason Zucker, back to the point, Scandella. For Niederreiter, Niederreiter to Koivu. Koivu checks Pouliot. Koivu at the line, Pouliot forced him out. Benoit Pouliot, of course, a first-round draft pick of the Minnesota Wild. Wines, fires a blast, big to save, the rebound for McDavid out in front again, just out of the reach of Pouliot. Comes to Griba now to Sekera, lets a shot go, bad save. McDavid with a chance, right out in front, cleared. Back to the blue line, Griba waits, fires another shot, that one goes wide. Hall gets spun around, Zucker wants to get it out and does, chops it down the ice. Last minute of play in the second Less than a minute to go here in the second period. Hall works his way down the left side, gets by Spurgeon. Here's Hall centering pass, too hot for Pacarinen. Pacarinen trying to keep it in at the blue line, can't do it. Bramlin with it now. Bramlin to Spurgeon. Spurgeon's got Pominville with him. Spurgeon throws it towards the net, big rebound picked up by Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins checked by Bramlin. Oilers regroup with 30 seconds to go in the period. Slepeshev works it in against Suter. Anton Slepeshev. Ryan Nugent Hopkins to Hall. Hall right out in front, and it's tipped away by Ryan Suter. Clefbaugh throws it towards the net. That one goes wide. Jason Pominville slowly to center. He will send that puck in around the boards as time winds down in the period. A period that sees the Oilers playing a little rope-a-dope as the <laughs> Minnesota Wild have all kinds of pressure, David Amber, but it is Iro Pakarinen getting his first goal of the season, and we're tied at two as we head to the third. Welcome back. Rogers Oilers hockey on Sportsnet, and Edmonton has clawed their way back into this hockey game after trailing early in the first by a score of two to nothing so credit Todd McClellan and his crew and let's look back at Todd McClellan 2003 was the year it was the Calder Cup final game seven 
between the Houston Arrows, uh, the affiliate at that point for the Minnesota Wild, as well as the Hamilton Bulldogs, which were a shared affiliate between Montreal and Edmonton, and lots to celebrate as the Arrows would record a 3-0 win, and they were crowned AHL champions. And when you win a championship, you have to get the Gatorade shower, and that was the case for Todd McClellan, who may no longer be a coach with the Arrows, but what I like about him, Drew and Kevin, he's definitely a straight shooter. <laughs> when he when he got the, the water or the Gatorade dumped on him, he talked about the guys being all his like like his sons. He said except one fake who was the guy who threw the water at the Gatorade on him. Let's take a look at the scoring summary brought to you by Warley Parsons Corey. Visit WarleyParsonsCore.com to join our leading industrial construction team and enjoy great benefits in a safe work environment. Every time we do this, the first period never changes. Or rarely changes. <laughs> Sooner scandal and hall in the second period, Iro Pakarainen. Sound like Kevin Quinn right there from Taylor Hall, who's got two points tonight, two assists, or sorry, a goal assist. And Bakarinen will be on that line with Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Taylor Hall in the absence of Rob Klinkhammer as the third period gets underway. Parisi. Pominville leaves it for Granlin. Granlin's got Parisi out in front. He is checked instead by Fame Hall. Trying to get around Pominville. Can't do it, but he gets the puck back again. Starts away with Bakarinen. Hall to Bakarinen. Bakarinen ridden off there by Suter. Strong. Hall takes a hit from Jared Spurgeon. Plays it back for Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Clefbaum trying to keep it in on the near side. Couldn't do it. Darnell Nurse, 12 minutes and 43 seconds through 40 minutes. A couple of hits in that game so far and uh, your evaluation coach i think it's pretty much the same as john shannon's i like that darnell has gotten better and better he doesn't mind the physical play and he is or has as he talked to you about dialed it back Yakupov pass is intercepted by zucker zucker waits waits now fires a shot how about the save the rebound stopped again is gliding through there was miko koibu there's sins around the boards brodine trying to keep it in can't do it benoit pulia Pouliot moving in with Yakupov. His shot goes off of Zucker. Zucker leaves it there for Niederreiter. Niederreiter works his way out, gets it to Koivu. Koivu across the line, hangs onto it, throws it towards the net. Cleared away by Davidson. Connor McDavid will give it to Eric Dreiba. Dreiba shoots it in. Suter on the far side. He'll come around the near side, and Ryba able to keep it in for the Oilers. Waiting for it there is Teddy Purcell with Korpakoski and Lander. Suter up the boards. Picked off there by Lander. Lander moving in with Teddy Purcell. Lander, his shot blocked by Matt Dumba. Gets it back again. Korpakoski's shot, this time blocked by Suter. Mark Fain's shot gets deflected wide. Sekera, a wrist shot through traffic. Purcell looking for the rebound. It's covered up by Devin Duke. I worked for a guy named Kevin Constantine, good coach of the San Jose Sharks when the Sharks were in their infancy. And he talked about gray area turnovers. He charted them all the time. Gray area is at the offensive zone blue line and the defensive zone blue line. Why is it a gray area? Because you know that the puck's coming back the other way if you turn it over there. Yakupov turns it over. Good rush on the transition by the Minnesota Wild. Andre Sekera throws the puck to the net. Anton Lander, instead of cruising through there, put the brakes on, stop, make sure. Don't just put your stick down and hope the puck hits you. Do your best to stop in front. Create some problems for the opposition goal. Margarina fires it in. Devin Dudnik can't stop it. Chopped at by Carter. And Ryan Carter outlet for Scandella. Marco Scandella flips it ahead for Porter. His shot is stopped by Cam Talbot. Back to the point it comes. Scandella waiting for it there. Puts it towards the net. Doesn't make it through. Fain gets it to Nugent Hopkins, who takes a hit from Marco Scandella. Pointers want to get a change in, so do the Wild. Brodine waits. Now he'll give it to Suter. Pass for Pominville. Gets by him. Darnell Nurse picks it up. He'll give it Oscar Clefbaum off the boards. That pass intended for Puglia. Clefbaum has it again. He'll lead the rush this time. Clefbaum ran into McDavid. And back the other way come the Wild. 
Hammondville checked by Yakupov right in front of the order bench. McDavid gives it to Yakupov. Pouliot back to Clefbaum over to Nurse. Eric Ryba was saying one thing about playing with a consistent partner is you get to know his voice as Nurse makes a shot and it goes off the boards and in. That puck is in off the bar and Darnell Nurse gets his first goal in the National Hockey League and it puts the Oilers on top by the score of three to two. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure, but then it, it got by Devin Dubnik so fast. This is a rocket of a shot. It's a great job in the neutral zone with the puck possession and the regroup. And then Darnell Nurse, what does he do? He takes what the opposition gives him. And you hear the, the great cheer from Darnell Nurse. He walked in and absolutely sent a rocket past Devin Dubnik. Boom, not a big windup, but it takes off. Back post, down, in. First goal is a beauty from Darnell. Wow. Darnell Nurse, his first point in the National Hockey League is a goal that puts his team ahead for the first time in this game. Dad is here to watch it. That's cool, man. That's cool. First game of the season, third game in his National Hockey League career. The owners being outshot 21-16, but the 16th shot off the stick of Darnell Nurse. He talked about dialing it back, and then when he dials it up, he gives his team the lead. 3.38, the time of the goal. Clefbaum and Pouliot get the helpers. Benoit Pouliot on a four-game point streak. The puck has been gathered up. It's going to have tape around it. The date and first goal on it. That is a bonus from that young man. He's played a good, solid game. I'll give him a little bit more confidence. That was a good shot. Pouliot. How much of a wind-up, eh? A little, oh. little wind-up. Boom. He didn't have a goal. In six games in Bakersfield, he has one here in the National Hockey League. The Akabov flips it out to center. Now the Oilers playing with a lead. Trying to snap a two-game losing streak and hand Minnesota their second straight loss. McDavid cutting for the net. His backhand misses the target. Carter on the far side gets it by Nurse. Left bomb over to cut it off. Left bomb. Pass for McDavid, pushes it neatly ahead to Yakubov, winds, fires a blast, Dudnik makes the save. And again, another broken stick. It's, somebody's been in the room sawing the sticks. Oh, but it's been happening for both teams. Yeah. Nurse with it again, wraps it around the boards. Prosser waiting for it, he will flip it down the ice, the owner's making changes, Driver back to pick it up. Six minutes gone here in the third period. The first of three between the Minnesota Wild and the Edmonton Oilers. Hall. Let it go. Pakarinen carries on. You know, Pakarinen drop pass for Ryan Nugent Hopkins. His shot gets deflected and ends up going into the netting. Darnell Nurse, 338 of the third period. His first goal in the bigs. Jessica Baines of Edmonton shopped at Safeway on behalf of Safeway and Kraft Dinners won the Legacina eight-piece cookware set on the first goal of his NHL career for Darnell Nurse. Outstanding job by the Oilers, just defeating the neutral zone forecheck of the Minnesota Wild. Patient with the defense, almost a little hinge play, and then Darnell Nurse just takes what, what he's given. The opposition backed up, he took it, and there we go. Start the right, and Harry. <laughs> There's that Jeff. Can't tell from there. Maybe Devin Jeff. Dubnik has never given up three goals in his career in a game against the Edmonton Oilers. He came into this game five and one. He's given up three now. 13-27 left to go in the third period. Davidson takes a hit, gets the puck down the ice. Brodeen for Granlin off his stick. Griba gets it to Sekera. As for Yakupov, failed. Pouliot intercepts to McDavid. McDavid back to the point. Sekera 
waits a wrist shot, sifted through traffic, went off Franklin and wide. There's Yakubov hammering a shot. Fain keeps it in. McDavid behind the net, being watched by Jonas Brodin. Yakubov in there to help. The puck comes free in the corner. And it's picked up there by Matt Dumba. Outlet pass for Pominville. Mikhail Granlin gives it to Pominville. Here's Parise. Parise trying to dance around Fain. Centers it out in front. Shot blocked. Suter with a backhand. That one goes wide. Parise to Pominville. Back up top to Spurgeon. Over to Suter. Suter throws it towards the net. Deflected by Granlin. Great save by Cam Talbot. And he'll cover up as Pominville was looking for the rebound. Saving you more on furniture, mattresses, appliances, and big screen TVs. A close call for the owners and a little bit of a scramble out front after that. But they settle down, they push everything to the outside, and they're actually doing a very good job here at just keeping the wild to the outside after the near chance. And look at the good work in front of the net. Two Oilers there boxing out. Cam Talbot makes his 20th save of the game. Puck finally comes free, and Nurse has got it. He'll give it to Hall. Hall flips it. Nugent Hopkins skating under it. Suter, though, will get there first. Suter checked by Nugent Hopkins, chopped out by Zucker. Down the ice, Nurse, who's got Niederreiter on him, plays it around the boards. Pakarina will pick it up. Pakarina takes a hit from Miko Koivu. Koivu to Zucker. Zucker. Trying to get around Clefbaum. Sharp angle shot there is Cam Talbot hugging the posts and making the save. Zucker's got Nita Ryder in front, battling with Darnell Nurse. Zucker behind the net for Koibu. Koibu to Nita Ryder. Nito Nita Ryder. Hangs onto it. Spurgeon down low, gives it to Nita Ryder. Suter the lone man back at the top of the blue line. Nurse pushes off. Spurgeon, but the Oilers can't get it out. Nita Ryder gives it to Suter. Suter goes cross ice. Hard pass for Koivu. Turns, lets it go. It's deflected in. Suter cruising through. Ties the game at three. Brian Suter not happy, just the one goal, gets the second one, does a nice job, fires it across, and now he's just going to keep going to the net. Keeps going to the net, and then just touches it in. You've got to have your head turned and find guys are going to be a problem. Right there in front, down owners, Darnell Nurse is going for the one man in front, who Spurgeon, nobody's picking up Suter, who goes to the net. This has got to be played from Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And that's why Ryan Nugent Hopkins has the reaction he had after. Turn, fire, couple deflections and a pad save. But Ryan Suter just stayed with it and just slows his pace, controls his skating, and tips it into the empty net. His second goal of the game. Suter started his scoring at 725 of the first, 843 here in the third. He makes it a 3-3 game with his first two goals of the year. Ryan Nugent Hopkins was not happy after that goal. Miko Koivu gets the assist along with Nino Niederreiter. Coyle keeps it in. Vanek out in front for Fontaine. Great defensive play there by Davidson. Vanek has it again. Feeds it out in front of backhand. They score. Charlie Coyle gives the Wild back the lead. It's too easy. You got complete control of the puck. Lost the program for a second. There we are. We're back. And the puck comes around. And then it's just individual one-on-one -on -one situations that you have to be on the right side of. Puck gets cleared around. Intercepted. Anton Lander gets beat back to the net. And Charlie Coyle puts it in. But you've got to take away that pass if you're Brandon Davidson. Give the first part of the crease to the goalie. Brandon Davidson's got to take away the pass to the front. Anton Lander has to, has, it has to have his man coming back to the net. Two goals in 43 seconds. Uh, put the Wild ahead by one. Charlie Coyle came into the game without a point in his last six games. 
He now has his third goal of the year, and his team regains the lead. Fontaine and Vanek get the assists at 9.26. They've reached the halfway point of the third period. Holla back to the point for Spurgeon. Steps into a slap shot deflected. Went off Payne into the corner. Porter with it now. The crowd is alive here at the XL Energy Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. Carter checked by Sekera. Gives it to Gramlin. Gramlin comes out of the corner with a puck. Turns to get away from Fane. Works it back to Spurgeon. Let's a shot go, and that one goes wide. And then Parisi ran into Talbot and then put it through the paint. It hit the post. A bouncing puck is finally covered up by Cam Talbot. But Zach Parisi came close to getting his eighth goal of the season. Parisi, second in the league in goals. Almost got another here. We'll be back. Time now for crunching the numbers with Old Dutch. The ripple effect. Old Dutch quality lives here. Kevin Dubnik versus the Edmonton Oilers, his old team. He is 5-1 with a goals against average less than one and a gaudy save percentage plus a shutout tonight. First time he's let in three against his old team. 4-3 the score with 9.25 left to go in the third period. He has faced 17 order shots. Cam Talbot has faced 26 from the Minnesota Wild. Build your home your way with Edmonton's award-winning home builder, Coventry Homes, the preferred builder of the Edmonton Oilers. A little fixing of the net happening. Crack staff here at the XL Energy Center. Todd McClellan would not be very happy with his defensive play, his team's defensive play. In the last few minutes, ever since Darnell Nurse scored, took the lead, and now the Minnesota Wild have stormed back with two goals, mostly because of defensive zone coverage and defensive one-on-one -on -one lapses. Two goals in just 43 seconds. The difference right now as Gramlin lines up against Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who won the draw. The puck sat there, and it's Oscar Fletchbaum who gets it. Another stick broken this time by Nugent Hopkins. Hall backhands it down the ice. Nugent Hopkins, Hall, and Pecorino. Suter, up the middle for Gramlin. Nugent Hopkins coming back, broke that play out. That allows Clefbaum to get started. Clefbaum gets by Pominville, throws it towards the net, caught by Dubnik, and he'll hang on. Interesting when you talk about Devin Dubnik, what he has done, you're talking to people around here and Devin, some of the work he's done, he's worked on tracking, and what he works on is getting his eyes and his mind ahead of his body. As a goalie, you're taught well, just to follow the puck, but all of a sudden you follow the puck and the puck has gone by you because the guy shoots so fast and so quick now. So right now, it's almost trying to make the save. Give your body a chance to make the save, even though it's not in position. Driver throws it off the end boards. Rodin, the Niederreiter, checked by Lori Korpakoski. Rodin, again, Korpakoski keeps the puck in. Anton Lander battling in the corner with Marco Scandella. Scandella. Works it out for Zucker. Korpakoski on the steal. He'll bring it right back in. The pass to Teddy Purcell. Purcell with a wrist shot. Stick save by Devin Dubnik. Zucker. Starts down the left side. Throws the puck in. Davidson getting there ahead of Nino Niederreiter. Driver plays it off the boards. Pouliot to Purcell. Purcell trying to flip it in from center. Can't do it. The owner's still able to get that change. Zucker. The middle for Ryan Carter, and he will flip the puck in. Last year, Minnesota was 12-8-1 in their games against the Pacific Division. Pouliot checked by Spurgeon. Carter back the other way with Porter. And Halla. Backhand glove save by Cam Talbot. That's another high turnover. Neil Yakupov tries to make a pass across the ice at the offensive zone blue line. It's behind. Benoit Pouliot, it goes the other way. This is a team that's very good on transition. The scout by the staff, the coaching staff, the Oilers, told the Edmonton Oilers that you keep making plays like that at the offensive zone blue line, 
you're going to be on the bench more than you're going to be on the ice. That's what you talked about with the coach this morning in that hockey strong Minnesota Wild team, not the biggest team in the league. They play a good system. They're tenacious after the puck. They're a quick team, and they will jump up in the play offensively, especially if you give them that chance with turnovers. Arena shoots it in. Spurgeon back to Suter. Ryan Suter, two goals on the night, started the scoring. And it gave his team the tying goal before Charlie Coyle put his team ahead at 9.26. Hall bounces it in. He'll peel off in a line change. Scandella behind the net. Connor McDavid. Neil Yakupov, Benoit Pouliot on the ice now. The bench shortened for the Edmonton Oilers. Nurse being watched by Coyle. Off the stick of McDavid. Shot right back in by Scandella. A bouncing puck comes to Darnell Nurse. Had to be quick there because Thomas Vanek was right on him. Left ball to Pouliot. Pouliot to Yakupov. Moving in with McDavid. Yakupov against Brodine. Left it in the corner. McDavid in there to help out. Now Pouliot in, but the puck comes to Vanek. Vanek. Finds an open wing and sends it out. Just over six minutes left to go here in regulation time. Pass from Korpakoski to Slepeshev. Too far for him. granlin has got it. Behind his back to Suter. Wrist shot through traffic. And Cam Talbot got a piece of that. Parisi from the corner. Knocked down by Greibach. Mikhail Gramlin gets the puck across the ice for Pominville. Back to the point it goes. Kept in by Jonas Brodin. Gramlin checked by Greiba. Suter pinches down. Slepeshev to Korpakoski. Korpakoski with Lander. Lori Korpakoski fires a shot that Dubnik makes the save and hangs on to. It's Rogers, Oilers hockey, and it's right here on Sportsnet. Welcome back. Shop at Safeway today. Watch future Sportsnet telecasts. You could be our next lucky winner. You could win a trip for two to a Dreams Resort and Spa, courtesy of RedTag.ca, where Canada shops for great travel deals. The Brick, saving you more on furniture, mattresses, appliances, and big screen TVs. Early in the season, the Edmonton Oilers 1-1 one one in one-goal games, and that's where we find ourselves right now with 5.25 left to go in regulation time. Koivu, Niederreiter, and Zucker. Hall on the back check. Scandella steps into a slap shot. Talbot sends that into the corner. Picked up quickly by Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins off the boards looking for Hall. Back the other way it comes. Sekera intercepts that pass, has to wait for Hall to clear. Moves the puck back to Clefbaum. Drew, the third periods have been problematic for the Edmonton Oilers as Hall moves in. Hall gets the shot, but it's over top of the net. It is game management, partner. It is what Todd McClellan and the coaching staff have talked to these guys about and continue to preach and focus on. It's managing the game, and there's a lot goes into that. There's more than, you know, it's a broad statement, I know, but it's where are you putting the puck? How are you using the puck? Are you on the right side defensively? Are you doing the right things on the faceoff? All the little things in close games that make you the, the difference between winning the game and losing the game. It's all about game management in this third period after they scored. They haven't been very good at managing the game. The owners have been outscored 13 to six in third period so far this season, but they only need one here in Minnesota. Amonville against Connor McDavid. 4.31 left to go in regulation time. McDavid wins the draw. Left ball to Yakubov. Tipped ahead for Pouliot. Pouliot, McDavid, backhand, forehand. Oh, what a save by Dubnik. He covers it up. Pouliot trying to put it home. The puck is still alive. They jam away, and finally the whistle goes. You can't get much closer than Connor McDavid right there. We saw him do it against the Detroit Red Wings. He almost did it here against Minnesota. I think Devin Dubnik saw it too. 
This is a nice play by everybody at the line. A little tip play, and they're trying to go back short side. Devin Dubnik. We also, the guy's about six foot 12 as well. Connor McDavid following the puck, reading. Now he's just going to jump in the play. Actually, Devin doesn't even bite on the first move. When you look at this save, he doesn't even bite on the first move. Solid, solid, solid. See, no bite on the first move. Drops that pad down. Now Connor tries to go one step further and try to get it past the, the blade. But Dubnik does not move on that first move. Really good patience by Devin Dubnik. Oh my goodness me, and the kid still almost put it in. On that replay, you see him still get around the, the skate and almost bank it home. He will stay out there with Yakubov and Pouliot. 4.15 left to go. Granlin wins the draw. Jumping up was Klepbaum. He took a hit from Parisi. And got it to Granlin. Now to Scandella. Every time he's on the ice, Connor McDavid is dangerous. Talking to a assistant general manager who's here for another team in the National Hockey League after first period, he was amazed at how good Connor McDavid was. Cross ice pass for Yakupov. Gets caught up in his skates. Hall comes up with it. Hall moving towards the front of the net. Drop pass for McDavid. McDavid goes back up top. Here's Nurse with a wrist shot deflected just wide by Taylor Hall. Nurse steps into a shot, and yeah, another broken stick. That was the theme of the night. Wow. 28-20. The shots on goal favor the Wild. Backhanded in by Nugent Hopkins. Suter. Turns to get away from 93, sends it around the boards. It gets by Vanek and by Griba. Davidson there, but Charlie Coyle brings it back in with Fontaine. Coyle upstairs, and that may have caught up his of the post. Hall on the far side. To the middle it goes. Vanek was all over Nugent Hopkins. Suter with it now. We're under three minutes left to go in regulation time. Tipped in by Fontaine, right on to Cam Talbot. The Minnesota Wild and the Edmonton Oilers both want to make changes. Anton Landers line on the ice now. Eric Ryba lays it off the boards for Lori Korpakoski. Korpakoski gets the puck in. Order shoots it out. Davidson. Sekera. Sekera at center. Gets the puck in. Devin Dubnik is going to play it himself. Plays it off the glass. Gets by Lander. And that allows Porter to get it out to center. Left ball. Oh, didn't you see it? Devin Dubnik thought that buck was probably going into the opposite corner, and it came right on him and hit him. Darnell Nurse in front. Quick shot to the net. Why? Because he doesn't want to get the shot blocked. Sees he's got two guys in front. Does a nice job shooting for sticks here. Not shooting the score. Shooting for the deflection. and almost goes in. And Charlie Coyle, who has been a force tonight. The big guy that can roll. When he gets body position, bang, he just banks it off the post and up and over play. McDavid almost took that face off right to the net. You see the confidence continues to build in Connor. Up against a veteran in Miko Koivu who came into this game with 56.4% on the faceoff circle. Miko's arguing with the linesman right now about the previous drop opportunity. From the faceoff, kept in by Klefbaum. Just over two minutes left to go. Dubnik steers that into the corner. Pulia plays it behind the net for McDavid. McDavid being watched by Koivu. Back to the point it comes. Sekera checked by Zucker. Zucker moving in with Coyle. Zucker takes a look. Great play by Clefbaum. The Ravenna scoring chance. Now a minute 45 left to go in the period. The Wild content to keep that puck pinned against the boards and let time drain off the clock. The Oilers need possession, they get it. Cam Talbots. Taking a look at the bench. Can't get there yet. Scandella will bring it back in for Minnesota. Talbot will leave it there for Clefbaum. Paul dishes to Nugent Hopkins. Talbot's on the bench. Six attackers on the ice for the owners. A minute ten remaining in the third period. 
Nurse on the ice. We'll get it to Hall. Puck arena out in front. Hall puts it there. Here's an opportunity. Denied. Nurse with the puck now. Darnell Nurse cutting for the net. Nurse circles. Gives it to McDavid. Back to Hall. Here is Davidson with a shot. Deflected over top of the cage. 50 seconds left to go. McDavid back to the point. Nurse with it now. Throws it towards the net. And a save by Devin Dubnik. He'll hang on to it. Who Tom McCullough's got on the ice? Brandon Davidson. Darnell Nurse, Connor McDavid, Hero Pacarini, Hero Pacarini, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and Taylor Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, the future is here. And the Edmonton Oilers will take a timeout. That'll give us a chance to show you the play of the game. It's brought to you by Rogers NHL Game Center Live. Follow your team on any screen from anywhere. Speaking about the future being here, here he is, Darnell Nurse, first goal in the National Hockey League, drills it past Devin Dubnik, little short backswing, boom, rises up, beats Devin Dubnik, and there's some terrific celebration, Nurse, Taylor Hall, and a big goal by Darnell, unfortunately, it is not held to be the game winner, the Wild struck back with two quick goals, and the Oilers are now trying to tie it. Oilers get that goal in the third period from Darnell Nurse at 3.38. Pouliot and Clefbaum the assist. They need one more right now with 44.2 seconds to go. The Oiler net empty. Anton Lander set to take the draw against Miko Koivu. Face-offs in this game right down the middle, 50-50. From the draw, scramble. One by the orders. Back to the point. Nugent Hopkins dishes. Yakubov fires it. Dubnik makes the save. The puck ends up in the corner. Parisi can't get it by Yakubov. Hall with it now. Controls the puck. Hall with a shot. That is blocked by Charlie Coyle. Hall regains possession. Hall. Side of the net. McDavid stopped by Dubnik. 16 seconds left to go. Lander, back to Yakupov. He'll go cross the Nugent Hopkins to Hall. Hall, Nugent Hopkins fires a shot. Broke. That one gets deflected in the corner and another broken stick for Nugent Hopkins. Time melts away. And the Minnesota Wild score a one-goal victory as Devin Dubnik is now 6-1 lifetime against his old team. Again, some positives for the Oilers. But not enough. I don't know if Todd McCullough is going to take much moral victory out of this one. It'll be interesting to hear him after the game. Devin Dubnik was good, but the Minnesota Wild, with their experience in their game management, were better than the Oilers. So the Wild take the first of this three-game series and snap a one-game losing streak. The Oilers now go home, a three-game losing streak in two until 4-3 the final.